Hey guys, Dr. Dex here. Today I want to tell you about how we use our table saw and maybe five tips or tricks on how you might be able to use yours as well. So if you like this video or you get something out of it, please don't forget to click the subscribe button as 83% of you do not subscribe to our channel. Hit that bell icon to be notified when we're putting out new content. All right, so what I have here is a standard 10 inch table saw. This is not a cordless version. This one actually plugs in. I prefer a plugged in version of a table saw because I need a lot of power. When I'm ripping a lot of pressure treated materials, it's really wet, it's really dense, and a cordless battery will only last me so long. Also, my depth of cut is less on a cordless saw because you're using a seven and a quarter inch blade versus a 10 inch blade. So Metabo HPT does make one cordless 10 inch saw with power adapter. We've used that in the past, but it's um, indisposed at the moment. So that's why we're using this table saw now. So basically there's certain functions of a table saw that we use all the time. The number one that we use mostly for our work as deck builders is ripping. So that's the number one thing that we do with our saw is rip. We take certain width boards and we turn them into different width boards by using this saw. So the table saw fence has to be fairly sturdy. I like this fence because it's onboard storage. You can actually take it off the, off the saw and stow it underneath the saw for transport. So it's a truly portable table saw. The fence will open up and it can go beyond. It'll go all the way to 24 and a half inches. And if you do, there's a flip stop over here that you can pop down for wider sheet goods for ripping in half, like sheets of plywood or whatever distance you need you can bring it in and that way your sheet goods don't flip down into here. They stay flat on here as you run them through, okay? Basically, the rip fence is a number one thing that we use on this saw. And let me show you how that works, okay? Let's just say I need a width here. I'm gonna lock the fence down. It's not gonna move now. I'm gonna power up the saw. Now, if I need to put my hands anywhere near this yellow, I'm gonna get to that in a minute and I'll tell you why. But this one, we're safe. We can keep our hands well away from the blade. Okay, here we go. All right, so basically, that's primarily what we use this saw for, okay? Another option that you may use this table saw for is called a cross cut. One of the tools that comes with this table saw is a cross cut guide or cross cut gauge. So we can put that in like that. You can make 90 degree cross cuts with this like so. And you can change this to different angles as well. So let's just say you need a, a 37 degree cut. You can actually put it on that bevel and get your 37 degrees if your board's long enough, okay? You're gonna need some distance or you can you can adapt a, a table. You could actually screw a plate to this and make this get much closer to your blade if you need to in case you're doing detail work and you need to possibly put something in here and you have a short board and then you need to do some cross cutting like so. But just for demonstration purposes, let's just set this back to 90 degrees so which means it's 90 degrees to our blade. Let's set this on here. Let's just say we need to take a quarter inch off this board and let's do it. So there's your cross cut, that's number two. So the next item on my list is probably the most important thing that you need to know about a table saw. And you should use it anytime that you feel you need as far as safety goes. Mine's on board, it sits right next to the fence. It stashes right here, it's called a push stick. These are the most underrated part of a table saw known to mankind, okay? So let's just say, I call this yellow plate, that's the danger zone. If you gotta get your hands anywhere near that, don't ever push something through. If you have to get into this yellow, use a push stick. Why you ask? Well, I've got a $25,000 thumb. I could show you why you don't wanna use a finger as a push stick. And I know several other people as well that have not, did not use push sticks and that have maimed their hands. So basically, I'm just gonna open this up a little bit. 
There's my width. I need to I need to rip this board, but I am definitely going to use a push stick for this. Sometimes I might use two push sticks if it's a really sketchy situation and I need to keep some force on the blade this way or a feather board, which I don't have one here today, but you can actually mount a feather board into this track and it'll kind of hold, you can even make one, and it'll hold this material up against the fence. Today, we're not gonna show you that. We don't need that, but I'm gonna go ahead and fire this off and use the push stick. Hopefully you noticed that when I fired up the saw, you wanna make sure that it's at full RPMs before you start ripping your material. That goes for any saw that we use, but one thing you can do is if you start trying to rip a board or if you have a board ready to go and it's close to the blade, you're either gonna bark the saw or you're gonna throw the board out or you're gonna injure yourself. So another tip that I would suggest is that you make sure that table saw is wound up to full RPM before you start ripping and then Definitely, if you're gonna, if you're doing like a plunge cut or something like that, and you gotta leave the board partially in, and you fire the saw off, make sure the blade is completely finished spinning before you remove the piece out of the table saw. So, as an example, let's just say I'm cutting a notch out of this board. I don't need to rip all the way through it, but I need to stop it three inches in. So I'm gonna start my cut. let it completely stop turning and then remove the board. If you, try to take, if you try to take the board out too soon, you can twist it, just a little bit of twist in here and it can buck. And I've, had, I've actually had material buck and hit me in the chest and knock the wind out of me. One time I had something buck, hit me in the chest and the board exploded. I am not kidding. It was one of the most painful things. It knocked the wind out of me. I had to sit down and uh, take a moment because it was very painful. Try not to move material during or when the saw blade is winding or down, it's winding up or winding down. Just be patient. Take your time. Let that blade stop before you pull that board. Okay, and one other thing that this uh, saw does that maybe some of you don't know is you can actually, cut angles with your table saw. It's not just meant for ripping at 90 degrees. You might need to cut a 22 and a half or a 25 or whatever angle. You can actually put the saw on a bevel and go ahead and rip that to whatever angle you need. Uh, it's really easy to do. Usually when I'm doing this, I try to, like if I'm trying to get a certain distance and I know my thickness of material is one inch. You can either uh, lower, lower your blade to that one inch height, and then I know, let's say I need to go to four inches. So now, now that I know that my blade is at the right height, I can bring the fence over to four inches to the inside of the blade, got my measurement at my one inch thickness, lock it down. Now I can raise the blade up a little bit to make sure I get all the way through this board, and I'll go ahead and make my cut. Okay, and then we'll check it and see how, how well we did with the measurement. So here we go. All right, how'd we do? What do you think, guys? Pretty good, huh? Four inches. All right. So then you can take your bevel, there's your two angles you need. You get to do a miter or something like that. It's pretty fancy. You can kind of get all kinds of creativeness with the table saw as well. So thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. If you like what you saw, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Hit that bell icon to be notified when we're putting out new content. Don't forget to like our videos and please leave a comment below. We appreciate you very much. Thanks for watching our channel. Have a great day.